because we don't need to access it anywhere else. Um, I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, instead of getting the value straight from the entry, we're going to create a variable to hold our, our value. So up here, I'll create... Let me move this up here. So I'll say self dot um, value var for a variable. And TK actually has a class called string var, uh, which is basically a string variable. It's a value holder for string variables. So we'll create an instance of that, and then we can pass that as the text variable option of the entry. So now this this string variable is tied to this entry. So whatever you type or, or set into the entry will be tied to the string variable. That's why I said we don't need to make the entry itself a, a, an attribute of the view class because we have access to its value with our string variable up here. So let's go ahead and run that to see what we have so far. So as you can see, we have our entry, and you see that padding all the way around. That's because we created that main frame and put padding on the horizontally and vertically. So we have our entry with padding all the way around. And as you can see right now, it's the cursor is on the left, but on a calculator, since it's numbers the you type uh, the other way around so you instead of from left to right you go from right to left so we'll need to put our cursor over here and the way you do that is with the justify option of the entry object so over here So justify equals right. And there's many different uh, resources out there where you can uh, look at the documentation for, for all the different objects in Tkinter and TTK that uh, give you a list of all the options that are available. So in this case we want the justify option to be right and that's going to put the cursor on the opposite side which is what we want since we're going to be implementing a calculator so now when we click in here um, you can't see the cursor but when you type in you can see that it's it's on the right so we say one two three four it behaves more like a calculator now so now that we have that we're going to want the the buttons of the calculator and like I said we're going to start with the the simple version so just you know 0 through 9 and the simple adding subtracting multiplying division so and that's all going to be on our view so I'm going to create another class variable and I'm going to make a list of button captions you'll see why in a minute so the the button captions um, like I said it's going to be similar to the what's on the iPhone so the iPhone the top row has a clear button and then it has the inverse plus or minus and then a percent and then a division so we'll use forward slash so that's the top row and then the next row 
we have the number 7, 8, 9, and then multiple occasion. We'll use a star. And then the next row is 4, 5, 6, and minus. And then the next row is 1, 2, 3, plus. And then the final row, it actually only has three items. It has zero uh, decimal and equals. So the reason I made a list of these, these options, these button captions, is so that I can create the buttons uh, dynamically instead of you know creating each one individually. I can iterate through these captions and create them dynamically. So another thing I'll need is um, a variable that tells me how many buttons I need or I can have per row and this is going to be four. So I'll make a, another class variable and I'll call it max buttons per row and that's going to be four and you'll see how we're going to use that in a minute but basically we're going to create the buttons dynamically one by one or in, a, in a loop but we can only have four per row as you can see here and then we need to go to the next row and then the next row and then the next row so we'll create another method over here And we'll say make buttons. And we'll call it from our init method. So to make the buttons, we need to. First, we'll create a frame in which we need to, we're going to pack them all in. And then again, this one, this frame, we're not going to need to access in any of the other methods of this class. So we can just leave as SRM. We don't need to, or FRM. We don't need to make it an attribute of the class. And we'll put it in our main frame. So we'll go ahead and pack that in. And that's the way pack works. Um, there's a side option, which you can say uh, top, left, right, or bottom. The default is, is just bottom. So since we packed this entry, now when we pack this other frame, it's just gonna go at the bottom of the entry. And if you pack something else, it'll just keep going to the bottom of it unless we specify another side. So this frame is where we're going to pack all of our buttons. And like I said, since we have a list of all the captions, we can just iterate through them to create them dynamically. So we'll say for caption in south dot button captions and we're going to need a button btn for a button and like I said we're going to be using TTK which is the more modern looking buttons the uh, theme widgets and this one like I said we're going to pack it into the frame that we just created so we'll put it into the frame and then the, the caption is actually the option is called text, so we'll say text equals caption, and then we'll pack that in. So let's see what that does for now. Okay, so you see how 